Welcome to the Lady Yum Yum Show. Today I'm making chocolate covered Oreos. Christmas time is here and one of my favorite parts of Christmas are all the cookies. And so I'm doing a cookie exchange with Jack from the Cooking with Jack Show. I'm going to send him some of my chocolate covered Oreos and he's sending me some cookie. I don't know what it is, but I can't wait for it to get here. Let's get started. I'm using Guitar Chocolate. This is my favorite brand. If you can't get this or don't want to spend a little more for it, you can use any other high quality chocolate. Another good one that you can get in almost any supermarket is Ghirardelli. And one of the things I like about the Guitar Chocolate is it comes in these wafers, so I don't have to chop up a bar. It saves time. So the first thing we need to do is melt our chocolate. And when we melt our chocolate, we want to do something called tempering it. And tempering makes chocolate that has a nice crunch when you bite it, and it has a glossy outside. So there's lots of ways to temper chocolate. I'm going to show you what I think is the easiest method. It starts with just hot water. Now this can be hot out of your tap if, you're, um, if the water out of your tap gets pretty warm. It's like 140 degrees. Um, and then I put it over the lowest heat your stove can go. So it doesn't boil, it doesn't even simmer. It barely, it just barely starts to feel warm. Very, very mild, warm water. Then I put a double boiler on. Now if you don't have a double boiler like this, you could just put a heat proof glass bowl on top of the water. Another thing that's unusual, I'm using very low heated water, so the bottom of the pan is actually touching the water. Uh, unlike normal double boiler where you have it below, the, the water surface is below the bottom of the pan. So that's it about the water, let's add the chocolate. I'm using one pound of chocolate, and I have a combination. I don't like milk or semi-sweet. I like it somewhere in between. So I'm using half semi-sweet and half milk chocolate. Let's swing this around. Sorry, I made a loud noise. Okay, now you just keep stirring. And, you know, tempering is important because of the shininess and the crunch of chocolate. But chocolate will taste great even if it falls out of temper. So you don't have to be crazy about this. Um, I like this method because I think you can do it without a thermometer and almost always get chocolate in temper, even without a thermometer. So keep stirring your chocolate until about two thirds of it is melted. So when you're down to about a third of the chunks remaining, you take the chocolate off the heat and you just stir, 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 stir. This is where it's actually going into temper. The solid pieces of chocolate have the crystal structure that we want, the, the shiny, crispy chocolate texture that we want. And they actually seed the melted chocolate and help they, them form the same crystals. So it's chemistry. I love chemistry. So we're just gonna keep stirring and it'll be in temper at about 88 degrees, 87 for milk chocolate, 88, 89 for dark, for semi-sweet chocolate. Since I have a, co a combo here, I'm going for about 88 degrees. And when all our chocolate pieces are melted, that should be about what temperature we're at. There we go, it's in temper, it's at 88 degrees. So we are ready to start making our cookies. So I have three kinds of molds here. Um, you don't have to have special equipment. You can use a cookie tin and a paper mold. You can use these silicone molds. These end up with a lot more chocolate around the cookie, which I kind of like. Or they have these actual cookie molds for this type of cookie, these plastic ones. So you can get these two types at most craft stores and obviously you know where to get your regular muffin pan. They also have these silicone cookie liners. These are the easiest if you're using the muffin pan. The paper ones tend to get stuck a little, but all of them will work. So all you have to do is spoon a little bit of chocolate in the bottom of the mold, enough to cover it completely. Once it's covered completely, and all the nooks and crannies are full, 
you can then press one of your cookies in it. And you don't want to press it so hard that it um, changes the bottom, you know, that the chocolate doesn't cover the bottom, if that makes sense. And then you just spoon a little more chocolate over the top and you're done. So I like using these molds versus dipping them because they come out so pretty and they're so easy to do. You get a really nice product out of it. So I'm just going to keep doing all my other molds the same exact way. Our cookies are ready to unmold. Now it's important that you let your cookies come to solid at a room temperature, somewhere between 60 and 70 degrees. You don't want to rush it by putting them in the refrigerator. It, it'll result in a less shiny cookie and possibly break the temper. So just room temperature works great. And I'm going to box these up in a tin for Jack. So to try to protect them on their long ride down to California, I'm going to crush some parchment paper and put it in the bottom of the tin just to give a little padding. I didn't want to use um, a bubble wrap because it's not food grade and I just like to keep everything safe and food edible. I don't know. I'm a little obsessive that way. That. I'm going to put about three sheets of parchment in the bottom here. And then I have a liner, ah, a liner that's also food grade that I'm just going to put in. It's parchment but it has a pretty pattern on it. And then I'll place my cookies on top of that. And then I'll put a little parchment on top, keep them safe. Now these are traveling to California, so hopefully Jack, I have my fingers crossed that they look as nice when they get down there. But with the weather and the high temperatures in California, who knows what they'll look like. But I guarantee they'll taste great. So one of the reasons I really like this silicone mold is it makes taking them out super simple. You can just pull at the edges and they pop right out into your hand. And there's our little cookie. So I'll put that one in. That one's really cute. It's a little Mr. Snowman. And here's Mrs. Snowman for Jack's wife, Tammy. Oh, that one came out really good. Put that in there. And then the same thing with these round silicone, they just pop right out. They're really easy. And I sprinkled a little um, crushed candy cane on top. And these plastic molds can be tough to get the cookies out sometimes. I just push a little. This one, oh, that came out really easily. And it's nice and shiny. And I wouldn't want to send it to Jack unless I was sure they were delicious. So I guess I'll have to try one. Mmm. I think you heard the snap, the chocolate. It's perfectly in, ten in temper. And Finished chewing. <laughs> They're so good. Um, I used a peppermint Oreo. It just has a little bit of peppermint taste. I'm going to finish packaging up Jack's cookies and his cookies to me should be here soon. So I'll see you back when I have them. So I was almost done decorating when the postman arrived with Jack's cookies. So I plated them up and saved them until I finished as a little reward. And they smell so good. I totally smell the cinnamon. Let's give them a try. Mm. Good job, Jack. <laughs> I totally taste both the eggnog and the chai. I'm not sure how that's possible. They're both strong flavors, but they're delicious and super sweet. And they kind of remind me of a snickerdoodle, but with frosting on them. A little more spice. They're awesome. Give them a try. Don't forget to look in the notes below for the link to Cooking with Jack. Thanks, Jack. Merry Christmas, everyone.